if you're in this quadrant, this is quadrant two, this is negative positive. If you're in this lower left quadrant, this is quadrant three, it's negative negative. And if you're in this quadrant over here, quadrant four, this is positive negative. Now, if it helps you and you wanna just do that each time you're graphing, go ahead. So now I know that this negative six two is somewhere over here in quadrant two. So I go six to the left and two up. Just gotta find six to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two up. Okay. And the other point I wanna graph is negative four, three. So then I wanna go four to the left and three up. Okay. So I got my two points. Let's make those two points. And this is real important. Make sure you graph the line as neatly as you can make sure it goes through those points exactly because this is going to be oh, see i just messed up the little camera boom kind of messed me up a little bit but that's okay i think i still got it okay all right um so we want to write the equation of this line, and we're, we want to write it in what's called slope-intercept form. Remember slope-intercept? Let me remind you, it's y equals mx plus b. So what does that M stem for? Do you guys remember? Or let me put it to you another way. On a line, how do we tell the steepness? How steep the line is? Slope. Slope. And in this case, since we have a, a graph, let's figure it out using rise over run. Because that's usually the, the quickest way. So if I'm here, I can go up one and across two. So the rise is one, the run is two. I just figured out the slope. What's the M value if the rise is one, the run is two? One over two. So I know the slope. It's one over two. Um, I gotta figure out the rest of the equation, right? And to help me out, I'm gonna use point slope form. Um, so let's review point slope form. Point slope. This is that other form that's a little more complex to write the equation, but it helps. It's useful when you know one of the points on the line, and we actually know two. So, so this one's y minus y one equals m parentheses x minus x1. It's this one. Okay. Now, what we need is points or a point. I actually know two points, right? I know negative 6, 2 and negative 4, 3. I'm just going to take one of them. I'm going to take that first one, negative 6, 2. So I'm going to use this, these two pieces of information. The slope I got from rise over run, and the point, negative 6, 2. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and plug it in here. Let's write that in. Let's y minus, which number would go here for in place of y1? The 2. Equals m, well, I know the m, the slope is 1 half parentheses x minus x1 and, and my x1 is negative 6. So you remember how that works? How would I write that in? Plus 6. There it is. Okay, we're, we're getting close actually. Now we got to just do a little work with this equation. 
Let's distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to multiply through by 1 half. And that's going to be y take away 2 equals 1 half times x. And then 1 half times 6. What's half of 6? Oh, plus 3. And then we'll just get rid of this minus 2. And we'll have our answer. y equals 1 half x, and then 3 and 2 makes 5, so plus 5. That's the equation for that line in slope-intercept form. y equals 1 half x plus 5. Okay. All right. Well, that wasn't too bad. So... If you're given two points, you graph the line, you can get the equation for the line this way. Let's try it again on the next one. Okay? You guys ready? All right, let's try it here. Mm. All right. So second one, we want to plot the points negative 3, negative 4, and 3, negative 8. Okay, so let's do that. Negative 3, negative 4, that's going to be somewhere down here. Let's just find exactly where it is. 1, 2, 3. And down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there it is. And then we want 3, negative 8. So that's instead of 3 to the left, we're going to go 3 to the right. And then we're going to go down 8. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, right there. Sorry. Those are our two points, negative three, negative four, and three, negative eight. And so make our line again. Okay. So there. There's our um our line. Uh we're going to need a slope. So let's see if we can't figure that out. Let's figure out our slope. Start here at this point. Are we going to go up or down to get to this other point? Down. down. So it'll be a negative number. And then we're going to go across to the right. So we just have to do some counting. Looks like we went down 4. So it's negative 4. How many did we go across? 6. Yeah, 6. So let me just write that down, negative 4 over 6. Um, I could reduce that, right? By 2. So it'll be negative 2 thirds. So I got my slope now. The slope is negative 2 thirds. Um, let me pick one of those two points. I'm actually liking this point. What's the advantage to picking negative 3, negative 4 for the work I'm about to do? Ooh, yeah. That's the biggest reason. Two negatives, so when you plug them in, they make become positive. Uh, the other one is 8 is bigger than 4, so there's an added bonus there. Okay, let's plug this in. So that would make that y plus 4 equals negative two-thirds, parentheses, x plus three. So just as was pointed out, those negatives become positives. Okay. So there's one advantage there. Um, so let's distribute...
here. Um, so I got to distribute negative two thirds. Ugh, I'm not looking forward to this. Y plus four equals negative two thirds. Negative two thirds times X. Now here's the tricky part. I got to multiply negative two thirds times what number? Three. Well, we've done that before. It's not impossible. Um, let me just do it over here. Negative two over three times three over one. Okay. Just multiply across. So negative two times three is negative six. Three times one is three. I get negative six thirds or negative six threes. I can reduce that, right? Simplify it. What does it become? Negative two. Three goes into six twice, but it's negative, so negative two. So it's actually minus two over here. Okay, not too bad. We actually did that pretty quickly. Great job, by the way, guys. Negative two thirds x, and then here I'm noticing, I'm noticing people saying, okay, negative two and negative four makes positive six. It's negative six. You're not don't. I see what's happening. People confuse the rules for multiplying with adding. You're just adding. It's same sign. Add and keep. So. That's minus six, and that's my answer to this equation. Okay. Now, before we go on to the problems on the back that we're going to do, uh, I'm going to see if we can develop a quick little shortcut so we won't have to necessarily do this process each time to get the equations. Okay. Um, so, just as I pointed out, this is called slope-intercept form. Obviously, the slope part comes from the fact the slope, right? The slope is part of our equation, right? The one half turned out to be the slope for the line, and it's in the equation. What does the intercept part mean? Does anyone remember? Any? Why is it called slope-intercept form? I'll give you a hint. What does that B represent? It's called the Y... Intercept. Why is it called the y-intercept? How does it relate back to the line? Think about that. Because the slope relates because it's the rise over run, right? How about the y-intercept? Where does this line cross the y-axis? Here's the y-axis. What number did it cross at? At five. At five, right? What number do we have here? Five. Five. That's not a coincidence, by the way. Um, let's see if that works out. What's the y-intercept number here? Look at this line. Where does it cross the y-axis? Negative 6. So wouldn't it have been a lot faster, since we already had to graph the line to begin with, rather than going through all this? Because we really did all this process to figure out that minus 6 and plus five, right? Would it have been much quicker to graph the line, find the slope, find out where it crosses the y-axis and just put those two numbers in there? Yeah. So t today, definitely on the, the homework, and tomorrow on some of the problems you're gonna get, if you see that you know the y-intercept, that's gonna be the quicker way to do that. If you see the graph and you see that you don't see where the y-intercept is, yes, you have to go this longer route that I just showed you. But you don't have to do it all the time. So we're going to try this new method on this next problem, okay? So I'm going to show you here how it'll go a lot quicker. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to graph these two points, 5, 3, and negative 5, negative 9. So let's do it. 5, 3. That's 5 over and 3 up. 5 over, and 1, 2, 3 up, right there. 
that's in quadrant one. And the other one is negative five, negative nine, like almost on the opposite end. It's five over and nine down. So five to the left, nine down. That's way down here. Wow, that's pretty far away. Let's go ahead and graph these two points. And if you graphed it nice and neatly, you'll see right away where it crosses the y-axis. But let's figure out the slope first. Okay. So graph your line. And we already have those two points, so we can use them to figure out our slope. I'm going to go up and across. Okay, let's see if we can't figure this out. So we're going to have to do a lot of counting. Let's figure out. Help me out, please. My eyes are a little strained looking at this thing all day. How many steps did I go up? 11. I'm hearing 11. I'm hearing 12. 12? Okay. I think it'll be 12. How many do we go across? Ten. So it's twelve over ten. We can definitely reduce twelve tens though. Six over five. So the slope is six over five. That's one of the numbers we need. The other number we need is B. But we could find that one right away. You are looking for this value. Negative 3. It's crossing at 0, negative 3. Do you see that? So that means the y-intercept number is negative 3. So if we need to write it in y equals mx plus b form, right, and we do, well, we know that it's going to be y equals 6 over 5 x take away three we, because we figured out these numbers. And that will go a lot quicker. And this one would have been a real messy. I mean, we would have had to distribute six-fifths. Not something I would have looked forward to. So if you can see where the line crosses the y-axis, it's a lot quicker. Okay. And we'll practice that today in the assignment. All right. Next, we're going to go over two more examples. And these are going to be our special cases because... If a line is horizontal or vertical, um, the equations for the line are actually super easy to write, but you've got to recognize them, okay? So let's go on to the, are you guys ready to go on to the last one? Okay, here we go. Special lines and equations. So we're going to start off with a horizontal line. This is going to give us a horizontal line. First off, here's our coordinates, negative 2, 7, and 4, 7. What do you notice? What's what's unique about these coordinates? Mm -hmm. They both have 7s in the y place. For y, they both have 7. Do you notice that? Look what happens when I graph those points. So I'm going to graph negative 2, 7. Oops, there's negative 2, 7 right there. Then I'm going to graph 4, 7. So I'm going to go over 4 and up 7. Do you see that both points are on the same level? So when I graph them, it's going to be a horizontal line. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Do you remember? Zero. And I can, if I want to, 
I can go through all the steps we just went through, you know, finding the slope, plugging it in, and doing all that, and then doing the math to get the equation. Or just recognize that whenever you have a horizontal line, the equation is y equals, just y equals, there's no x, it's y equals whatever y value I have. What's the y value? 7. That's the equation, y equals 7. So in this case, that's what we write for the equation, just y equals 7 when it's a horizontal length, okay? So the next one's going to give us a vertical line, the next two points. We're going to get a vertical line. What do you notice about these coordinates? They both have negative 5. Yeah, they both have negative 5. And the negative 5 is in the x position, see? It's where x should be, okay? So let's plot these points, and they're going to give us vertical, a vertical line. So we want negative 5, 1, right there. And then what's the other point that we want? Negative uh, 5, negative 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right there. Do you see the line we're going to get there? A line that goes straight up and down. Okay. So whenever you get a vertical line, the slope is what? Anyone recall what the slope is? It's not a zero slope, it's undefined. undefined. It's going to be an undefined slope. So, real quickly, I'm, I should have pointed this out earlier. For a horizontal line, y's are equal. I'm going to just point that out because... And for a, a vertical line, x values are equal, so x's are equal. Okay, so when you get a vertical line, since the x's are equal, the equation for this line is x equals just x, no y involved, just x. x equals whatever the x value is. So in this case, it's x equals negative 5. So once you see them, hopefully you recognize them. You can go back to the notes to verify it. But that particular line would be x equals negative 5. Okay? So if you notice that both of them had a, say, a 2, a 2 here instead of negative 5, then the equation would be x equals 2, okay? Um, so that's the notes. I'll pass out the glue sticks in a little bit. Uh, but I want you to go to Delta Math. I want us to do a few examples in there. <clears throat> 